Hello everybody, it's Heather Nichols here. I'm coming to you from my beautiful backyard today. Um, glorious summertime Colorado deliciousness. And uh, I wanted to share a tool from Access Consciousness that I have talked about before that I've been playing with a lot more lately than usual and in different ways. And that is the question, who does this belong to? Um, another way to ask that question is, is this mine? And, um, and we, it's amazing how we create our lives from stuff that isn't ours. <laughs> like we think we want things. We think we desire things that are not even our own desires. We kind of like jump into the mix with everybody else and we don't realize it because we're very aware. And when you're very aware, you have awareness of lots of different realities, lots of different desires, lots of different people, um, different ways of being, different types of personalities even. And we just, you know, kind of take a lot of that on without realizing that a lot of it isn't even really relevant to us. And, um, I just had this experience where I was in Europe and I was doing a class there and, um, I basically went to, <laughs> went to Europe for four days. Um, I went to Switzerland and I did a class and I was, my partner, Brian and I had all these plans. We were like, he was going to come over and we were going to go to Spain and then we were going to go to France and then we were going to maybe go to Germany and do a class in Germany and then maybe we were going to go to Prague. We had all these different versions of, of plans that we were making um, at various times about what we were going to do. And, and I realized, I, I, we both kind of were like, you know, we live we, we don't actually live together. So we, we don't, it was like, we wanted to be together, which we could do at home easily. Um, and I mean, we have two homes, Seattle and Boulder, but we were like, we live like our two homes are in really beautiful places where there's a lot of amazing summertime fun going on. And we were like, we could just be at home. Like we could just be in Colorado and, hang out together and hike and enjoy the summer and enjoy cooking and the farmer's market and all that kind of stuff. And, and, uh, it was like, and I, when I really started to look at it, I was like, that's actually way closer to what I desire. I could stay in Europe. We could do this whole trip, you know, but it, I realized that it wasn't really my desire to go touring around Europe. I, I actually have done a lot of that and I'm very grateful. And I, I spent almost my entire summer last summer, not home. I was in Europe for six weeks and other places. And, and, um, I've just had this like craving to be home. And it was so cool to realize that I, what I was trying to create was maybe somebody else's idea of what I should do or what they should do or what they would want to do or what of course you would want to do if you were in Europe and you had only been there for four days coming from the United States, you'd want to stay, you'd want to go other places, you know, and it was like, but I had to stop and go, wait a minute, what's actually true for me? What's actually mine? What's, what's actually like what I desire? And the amazing thing is, is we don't tend to get the clarity of that until we actually get present with ourselves and actually ask what we desire with the acknowledgement that we very well might be enacting or trying to create something that other people desire or that other people would desire for us. Um, and so it's, it's one of those things because you know, the, there's so much noise in the field all the time and there's so much, I mean, on social media and I mean, there's just like so much noise at every turn and we're all aware of it. And, um, and it's so easy to get like when you're very energetically aware to perceive that noise and start to think that it's you, it's relevant to you. It's true for you. And one of the things that I'm working with now and that I've seen really dynamically is 
how diligent I actually have to be to be clear about what's true for me and what I desire. And it's actually, I'm finding out that it's quite different than what I thought it was. Um, and for years I've been creating my business partially based on what I desire and partially based on what I thought I desired. And, um, and when you're, when you're creating something that isn't true for you, when you're trying to create something that isn't exactly what you desire, uh, it, it won't show up. Like it won't show up with ease. It will feel kind of like a fight or a struggle or a, like you have to try to force something into existence. Whereas, you know, when you're like, it's like we came, you know, I ended up coming home from, um, from Europe and Brian came here and we met up here and, and we're at our house in Boulder and it's like, I'm just deeply enjoying this time. We both are and, and relaxing and creating in a different way. Like there's a really different space of creation showing up. Um, and there's just a sense of like being nurtured and being supported by the universe. And that's, that is always the energy that shows up when you are congruent with what it is that you're asking for. And, um, and when you're, when, when what you're at, I should say, when what you're asking for is actually what's true for you. Um, and, um, and so how do you get to that? Well, you know, first of all, look, if there's things that you've been asking for or trying to create that are not showing up, I, it's always a good idea to ask, is this something that I truly desire? Um, and then, you know, if it's not, then you can start to look at what you do truly desire. And sometimes that requires some discomfort and like letting go of all that stuff and then just getting clear on well, what's true for me, you know? Um, and then also, um, the tool, the tool, who does this belong to, or is this mine? And just have that at the ready to be asking all the time because there can be emotional experiences, psychic experiences, psychological experiences, energetic experiences, like even physical things that feel like they're, uh, of course they're yours, you know, but when you start to ask, wait, is this actually mine? Or am I, I'm actually just aware of other people, other things, other realities. You may start to realize that you're way more aware than you think you are. And you're perceiving a lot of what other people have going on, but you're not actually, um, like you, there's a sense of, um, of, um, you know, it, that it isn't actually yours. And, and that requires a level of vulnerability with ourselves to just get honest with ourselves about where we're at, what we desire, what's true for us. And also, um, it, it, um, it's, there's, there's such a freedom in that to just go, okay, I'm going to let go of you know, I'm going to let go of the point of view that this was what I desired. And I'm going to actually just get a lot more clear about what's really true for me. Then you can start a different exploration. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, and what is it that you truly desire that you could start to ask for and create right now? And maybe it's even what you already have, which is part of what I realize is like, wow, I'm, uh, I'm so grateful for what I have. And it's not about not creating more, but it's like, I'm so grateful for what I have and I just want to enjoy it, you know, like, and, and still be in the creation of greater, but like from a different place of really having gratitude and enjoyment of what is, you know, and that's a, that's a space that gives us a lot of peace and a lot of ease and relaxation. Um, and boy, I wish that for the world. I mean, if we lived in a world full of people that were tr tr truly at peace, truly had relaxation and a sense of ease, um, this world would be a very different place. So we can only do our part by choosing what's true for us. So I hope that was a contribution to you and see you next time.